Chlortainer is the safest, most reliable technology for processing and preventing a chlorine gas release. In this video series, we will demonstrate the proper operations and maintenance procedures for a one-ton Chlortainer. All warnings and instructions in this video must be followed and understood by all personnel involved in the installation, loading, unloading, operation, and maintenance of the Chlortainer. Chlortainer can also be used for anhydrous ammonia and sulfur dioxide mitigation. Before loading the chlorine ton cylinder into the vessel, wipe any water off the cylinder and chime with a cloth. Remove the protective valve bonnet from the cylinder and verify that the interior supply valves are in the vertical position. Use an ammonia wick to test all fittings and valves on the cylinder for leaks, including the fuse plugs at the rear of the cylinder. Place the interior supply line out of the way, being sure not to fold, overflex, or torque the line. Carefully push the cylinder into the chlortainer. Now lift the drop-down roller section past the support beams and reconnect it in its secured, upright position. Now we're ready to connect the interior supply line. The first step is to make sure both the exterior chlorine supply valve and the ball valve are in the closed position. While holding an ammonia wick next to the top of the interior gas supply valve, remove the cap from the cylinder's valve using a chlorine valve wrench. Be careful to not remove the cap from the bottom of the interior liquid supply valve. Examine the faces of the interior gas supply valve and the yoke adapter to ensure a clean connection. Inspect the interior supply line for kinks or damage. If necessary, replace the line. Now, remove the golf tee from the line and connect the interior supply gas line to the top of the interior gas supply valve. Always install a new gasket between the interior gas supply valve and the yoke adapter connection, making sure to only use one gasket. While holding an ammonia wick next to the yoked connection, Use the ton wrench to slightly open the top of the interior gas supply valve and then immediately reclose it. Use the ammonia wick to test the entire interior supply line, fittings, and connections for leaks. Any leaks found in this check must be corrected. Only after confirming there are no leaks, open the interior gas supply valve one full turn. Now you can open the fail-safe valve. After opening the fail-safe valve, Recheck all of the internal and external connections, fittings, and valves to confirm there are no leaks. We are now ready to close the vessel door. The first step before closing the door is to inspect it and wipe it clean of any dust or debris on both ceiling faces. Inspect and clean the O-ring, making sure that the O-ring does not have any cuts, tears, or gouges. Replace it if necessary, making sure to use only a Viton O-ring. Using only a halogenated grease, keep the O-ring lubricated. Remember, only a light coating is needed. To close the door, swing the head of the door to the closed position. It is important to keep the yoke bolts clean and lubricated for rust prevention and easy operation. Next, draw the yoke halves over the head flange by turning the yoke bolts using the chain drive hand wheel until the positioning plate falls over the yoke lugs, indicating the yokes are completely closed. Tighten the lock nut to 15 foot-pounds. It should be just a little bit more than hand tight. After the vessel door has been completely closed, make sure the vacuum regulator is set to accept the flow of chlorine from the exterior chlorine supply valve. Make sure the vacuum pressure gauge valve is in the open position 
while the pressure check valve is in the closed position with the cap on. Next, open the exterior chlorine supply valve one full turn. Ammonia wick the connection at the exterior chlorine supply valve and vacuum regulator to ensure there are no leaks. Chlortainer is now operational or on standby. The scale system should now be inspected to ensure proper weight and settings. Before opening the door, there are a series of checks that are required to ensure that chlorine is not present. If chlorine gas is present at any point in these checks, perform the emergency procedures. The first check is to ensure that the cylinder is empty by checking the scale system. If the scale registers weight, then the cylinder is not empty. Do not open the door. The second check is the vacuum pressure gauge. If the gauge shows pressure, there is chlorine present and you must not open the door. Slightly open the pressure check valve and use an ammonia wick to ensure there is no chlorine inside the chlortainer. Close the pressure check valve after performing this check. The next checks involve the pressure warning devices on the door. Loosen the top pressure warning device and check it with ammonia. Repeat this process with the bottom pressure warning device. After confirming that no chlorine is within the chlortainer, we can proceed with opening the door. Next, turn the yoke bolts using the chain drive hand wheel. When the yokes fully clear the closure head, the door may be swung open, giving full access to the inside of the chlortainer. When the door is open, turn off the interior gas supply valve by giving the cylinder wrench a sharp wrap with the palm of the hand. Draw any residual chlorine out of the interior supply line using the vacuum regulator and disconnect the interior gas supply valve using the ton wrench. Place a golf tee into the yoke adapter to prevent moisture from entering the interior supply line. Place the interior supply line out of the way, making sure not to fold, overflex, or torque the line. Install a cap on the interior gas supply valve, making sure the cap has only one gasket. If you have a fixed loader, detach the drop-down roller section. If you have a movable loader, position the loader into place. Remove the empty ton cylinder from the chlortainer using the automatic winch. Now you're ready to load the full cylinder for process. In the event of an emergency, evacuate all chlorine from within the vessel before opening the door. Chlorine can be detected when the vacuum pressure gauge registers pressure or if the pressure check valve indicates chlorine is present when wicked with ammonia. If you are unable to completely evacuate the vessel through the primary supply system, you will need to switch the vacuum regulator to the alternative supply to complete the evacuation. In order to do this, First, close the exterior chlorine supply valve attached to the vacuum regulator. Remove the vacuum regulator from the exterior chlorine supply valve. Attach the vacuum regulator to the alternate exterior chlorine supply valve. Install a new gasket and make sure that the connection is secure. Open the alternate exterior chlorine supply ball valve and check it with ammonia to ensure there are no leaks. In this video, we will go over the one-year and five-year maintenance procedures required for the proper upkeep of Chlortainer. With each cylinder exchange, visually inspect the Viton O-ring. The O-ring should be lightly coated with halogenated grease, and we recommend replacing it annually, or if it shows any excessive wear or deterioration at any point in its operation. Visually inspect both sealing faces of the closure with each use of the chlortainer. Keep the faces clean by wiping them with a soft cloth and then applying a very thin coating of halogenated grease to prevent corrosion. 
We also recommend cleaning and lubricating the vessel doors with Never Seize Regular Grade Anti-Seize and Lubricating Compound. As part of annual maintenance, we also recommend replacing the lock nut gaskets within the pressure warning devices. For the five-year maintenance, we recommend replacing the chlorine feed lines, the yoke adapter, and the chlorine supply ball valves.